Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha our Mashiach, his voice. Hear, O Yasharol, Yahuwah our Mighty One, he is one Yahuwah. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you the Feast of Unleavened Bread. What are we supposed to do at this time? Clean out the leaven from your house. Well, Brother David, there's so many different things that's out there. I mean, the list is so long. Should we just throw away everything in the closet? Well, let the peace of your heart rule your decisions. But... I will attempt to give you a template so that you can understand what this leaven is. Because the question is, did our ancient ancestors use yeast, baking soda, baking powder, eggs, you know, to make their bread rise? Or was there another method? Let's investigate that. Ancient bread making. The ancients did not use yeast as we know it today. Well, that answered the question pretty quick. Since the days of ancient Egypt, 5,000 or more years ago, right up to the present, bakers have captured and used wild yeast to make bread. And you can do this as well right in your own kitchen. Here's how. We're going to learn how to capture wild yeast and make leaven ourselves. Mix a cup of flour, whole wheat or white, with a cup of lukewarm water in a small jar and stir them together until they are smooth. Place the mixture on a shelf or window seal and leave it uncovered so the yeast will be able to find food. Now wait and watch it change over the next several days. Stir that mixture each day with a wooden spoon or stick. After a few days it will start to smell a little sour and become sticky. The mixture is fermenting which is another way of saying that it has attracted invisible wild yeast, which are feeding off the flour and water and changing everything in the process. Once it begins to ferment, place a cloth or napkin or piece of cheesecloth over the jar to keep it from drying out on the top. After five to 10 days, depending on the place and temperature of the room, you will notice small bubbles in the mixture. This is that carbon dioxide, which is a byproduct of the reproduction of the yeast. Notice that the smell is more pleasant, almost like peaches. Give it another five days to build strength, stirring it daily and feeding it by adding a few tablespoons of flour and maybe a little water if it's too dry. If I had my little girl, if she wasn't grown already and already out in the world, She used to love her arts and crafts. Man, she would have took hold of this. She would have been making yeast and baking bread within 10 days. You now have a cup of, guess what? Sourdough starter that you can add to bread dough to make it rise. You can store it in the refrigerator to keep it fresh and to slow down the fermentation process. After you have added it to the flour and water you use to make your bread dough, Be sure to take a cupful out before adding any other ingredients and set it aside so you have more sourdough starter for your next batch of bread. Now look on the bottom. Let's look at the Hebrew word. The Hebrew word is hametz. What does it mean? Hot and press. So the most accurate translation in English should be hametz. What is it equal in English? Baked bread. 
But hametz in reality comes from a root which means to be sour. So the ancients used sour dough in order to make their bread. They made it right at home. They didn't go to the supermarket. They didn't buy the products that we have today. So when it came time to clean out the leaven, all they had to do was to get rid of their sour dough starter. Let's go to the scripture. Exodus chapter 12, verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. So for seven days there can be no leaven found in your bread. Even, indeed, the first day, ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. What does he mean? The first day of the month? No. The first day of the feast. The fourteenth day, before the evening, you were to throw all of the leaven out of your house. Why did he let you do this all the way up until the feast? Because bread was their stapled diet. This was something that they ate every day. So he gave them until the last minute to get rid of the leaven. When that sun went down and the Passover began, there was not supposed to be even any leaven found in your house. Now, if you started to throw it away beforehand, there's no prohibition against it. You can get rid of it two weeks in advance, a month in advance, however you want to do it. But just remember, for the seven days that you're on this feast, you cannot eat anything leaven. Why? For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day of the feast until the seventh day of the feast, that soul shall be cut off from Yasharal. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. When our ancestors were in the land of Egypt, Moses told them to slaughter a lamb, spread the blood upon their doorpost, so that death would pass them by. Are you with me? Suppose they didn't slaughter the lamb. That means death would find their homes. For us, in this modern day, we have to remove the leaven from our house. We are not to eat anything leaven for seven days. Why? So that our soul will not be cut off from the nation of Yasharal. You got it, brothers and sisters? This is serious business. Exodus chapter 12, verse 18 to 20. If you notice, we're using Exodus for our lesson plan because the children of Yasharal were just leaving captivity of the bondage of Egypt. So this is the template for us to follow, correct? Verse 18. In the first month, let's stop. How do you find the starting point? How do you find the first month? How do you get to the month of Abib? Well, if you find the first month, what is the starting point of that first month? Is it the dark moon? Is it the crescent moon? Is it the full moon? Is it the solar calendar? Is it the Gregorian calendar? Do you see how many stumbling blocks you have to go through just to find the truth? If you haven't checked them all out and don't know how each one of them work, you failed yourself. On the 14th day of the month at even, what are you supposed to do on the 14th day of the month at even? Ye shall eat 
unleavened bread for how long, Brother David? Until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. On the sky calendar, the fourteenth day of the month in even represents the fifteenth day. On the sky calendar, the one and twentieth day of the month at even represents the twenty second day. On the sky calendar, all of your Sabbaths are the eighth, the fifteenth, the twenty second, and the twenty ninth. Without fail, all of your feasts and your high holy days will fall on a Sabbath. That's why it's called a high holy day. It has to fall on your regular weekly Sabbath. Tell me something. Do we have it right? Our feast starts on a Tuesday. And our Sabbath is on a Tuesday for this month. A high holy day. Verse 19. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. So you can't have anything in there with leaven. Look what happens. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, indeed, that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Yasharal, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Do you see how serious this is? Okay. What if you're following the Jews? You're going to start from the dark moon, which is the prior month. If you start from the prior month, which is one day, then you start your count after that from the slither moon, which is day two. If you're starting from the dark moon, you're going to end up on the 13th day of the month. You're going to be one day off. You're going to be eating leaven on a high holy day. What if you added a 13th month to the calendar, starting from the dark moon? Now you're going to be eating leaven on a high holy day, and it's going to be 31 days later. What about if you're coming from the slither of light, the crescent moon? It is the correct starting point. But what if you're following the Jews with their addition of the 13th month last year, which most people are following? You're going to find yourself 30 days off, which means you're going to be eating leaven on a high holy day. What if you're starting your feast days from the full moon? The full moon is the 15th of the month. So you're starting your count to your Passover from the 15th when you're supposed to be having your Passover on the 15th. So you're going to be 15 days off. What are you going to do? You're going to be eating leaven on a high holy day. What if you start from the solar calendar, which starts from the spring equinox? You're going to be totally off. You're going to start your count from the spring equinox and you're going to find yourself into April. You're going to be eating leaven on a high holy day. What if you're starting your count from the Gregorian calendar, which is not anything to do with the moon also. They start their months from the 21st of every year from the so-called spring equinox, which they have fixed the day to the 21st. So no matter what happens in the sky, they're still going to start their count from the 21st. You'll never find your Sabbaths and your feast days on the Gregorian calendar. So what's going to happen? You're going to be eating leaven on a high holy day. Don't you think that it's important that you have the right day? Why do you think that I'm pressuring you so much? Why do you think that I've created this serious series of videos so that you can know the truth? I don't care where you go. You are not going to see this anywhere else. Yahuwah has revealed it to me. I am revealing it to you. You are responsible to reveal it to others so that we can save our brothers and sisters. Verse 20, ye shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations. Shall ye eat unleavened bread? 
How many times does he have to repeat himself? Well, when you're dealing with a stiff-necked people, you have to say the same thing over and over and over again. Exodus chapter 13 verses 3 to 4 verse 3 And Moses said unto the people Remember this day. He didn't say forget, did he? He said remember. We have memory loss. In which ye came out from Egypt. He's speaking of the physical land of Egypt. What does Egypt represent? Out of the house of bondage. When you see Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. That is a bad translation. It should have been. I'm going to return you to the house of bondage again. In ships. But they put Egypt there. You have to make it through all the stumbling blocks, brothers and sisters, to find the truth. But you have to be looking for them. For by strength of hand, Yahuwah brought you out from this place. He said that he's going to do this thing again, a second time, to recover the remnant of his people that were scattered throughout the earth. Let me ask you a question. Who is the only group of people that are recorded in history that have been scattered all over the world in ships and are still in the lands of their captivity today? And this year marks 400 years that we have been in bondage. Do you know of anyone else? There shall no leavened bread be eaten. The leavened bread represents the bread of haste. They didn't have time to put yeast and to make the bread rise or to make their chametz. So they made their flat bread. Verse 4. This day, at the appointed time, came ye out in the month of Abib. All right, we've learned how to find the month of Abib. How did we learn how to find that? Enoch told us. Jubilees told us. Jubilees comes from the book of Enoch. What did they tell us? He gave us a whole bunch of numbers, didn't Enoch? Once you add up the numbers, you find that the sun has 364 days. Come down a little lower, you add up the numbers about the moon, you find that the moon has 354 days. Then you come to modern day astronomy, you find that the moon has 354 days. And then you find that the sun has 365 days, according to them, because they added a day. Plus, they add leap years, so sometimes it's 365, sometimes it's 366. It's according to when they add their leap day. But really, it's 364 days. Now, how did Enoch and Jubilees know this? even before there was any astronomical equipment that we know of. In Jubilees, he says that the moon will come in from year to year, 10 days too soon. That's how you know where the shortage comes from. So we know how to identify the month of Abib. Do the other people know how to do that? Let me tell you right now, the answer is no. Do you know why? They dismiss with the book of Enoch. And they do not understand the book of Jubilees because they've dismissed with the book of Enoch. Because Enoch has the explanation of the book of Jubilees. 
Now look when they came out in the month of Abib. We're in the month of Abib right now. This could be the time of your deliverance. This is 400 years. All of the prophecies are in place. The man of sin has been revealed. The world is in chaos. Never before in history have we seen things that are happening today. Be ready. First Corinthians chapter five, verses six to eight. This is for the Christians. If you have any people in your family who are Christians, who say that they're not going to keep this feast so they don't want to do it because uh, they're Christians or whatever excuse they have, show them this. Verse 6, your glorying is not good. What they are saying to you about they don't have to keep the feast, they don't have to clean out the leaven, this is not good. Because remember what happens to those who eat leavened bread during this time. What shall happen? They shall be cut off from the congregation of Yasharal. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? All you need is a little bit to make it rise. One person says it, and because people do not check, they do not study, all they do is follow, this will rise amongst the people, and everyone will be leavened at the time of unleavened bread. Verse 7. Listen what Shaul is going to say. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Paul said, clean out that leaven from your house, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. Now watch how he puts it together. And this is in some sort of encrypted speech so that the translators couldn't mess it up. For even, for indeed, Yahusha, our Passover, he was the Passover lamb, is sacrificed for us. You don't need to have a sacrifice anymore if you believe in Yahusha, if you believe in the Mashiach, if you believe in the Messiah. The only thing you have to do is to clean out the leaven, okay? If they still don't believe it, take them to verse 8. Listen to Shaul. Listen to what Paul said. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Well, what feast is that, Brother David? The feast of unleavened bread. Not with the old leaven that you have in your house. It has to be thrown out. Neither with the leaven of maliciousness and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You need to get your hearts right. Even in the New Testament, you find that you have to keep the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But yet, our people, they do nothing. They follow Christian ways. Do you know what they do at this time? They'll take communion. Communion is not even in the scripture. Luke chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Verse 1, in the meantime, when they were gathered together in an innumerable multitude of people, let's stop. Do you remember the doctrine of the church that because the Jews, the Israelites, Yasharol, the children of Jacob, 
rejected the Marshiach that salvation had come to the Europeans. Now you can see it's a lie. The numbers were so great that you could not even count them. Insomuch that they trod one upon another. They were trampling each other to try to get to him. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. If I can just get close enough to hear this message of deliverance, I know that my life will change. He, who is this he? Yahusha began to say unto his disciples, first of all, the primary thing that I want you to get into your heads. Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. How radical is that? I want you to read Luke chapter 12 you're going to find that even though Yahusha gave him a clear analogy that the leaven of the Pharisees is hypocrisy, they didn't understand. They thought he was talking about bread. Now, how can they bring it to bread? Because he said leaven, but he also used in the same sentence hypocrisy but yet they thought he was speaking about we didn't bring bread. Brothers and sisters, they looked up to the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the teachers of the law. They were before Yahusha. Yahusha came after, but Yahusha came down to set the record straight to explain Expose the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And they could not understand. The only reason that they did not understand what the Mashiach was saying is because they had no knowledge. But he was trying to educate them here. Let me see if I can educate you. Now, because first of all, the primary thing that I want you to get into your head, beware ye of the leaven of the Israelite brothers, which is hypocrisy, Brother David. You are a radical. How dare you speak against the Israelite brothers? They've brought so many into the fold. They have huge congregations. They're spreading all over the world. They're teaching their doctrines. Beware ye of the leaven of the Israelite brothers, which is hypocrisy. Well, Brother David, you're going to have to prove that. Who united them? Did Yahuwah? Did Yahawah? Did Yahawah Shai? Did Yahusha? No. Who united them? Christos. Christos. Christ. The Sun God. They have blasphemed the name of Yahuwah all day long. The only person who united you is Yahuwah. 
Beware ye of the leaven of the Israelite brothers, which is hypocrisy. They told you that you start your count from the full moon, which is 15 days into the month. It is against nature. It is against the clock in the sky. It is against Yahuwah. It is against the scripture. But because the people are void of knowledge, they don't know. And they trust in hypocrites. What will happen if you eat leavened bread on a high holy day? That soul shall be cut off from the congregation. What will happen if you put any other gods, any of their names, before Yahuwah? That soul shall be cut off from the congregation. Beware ye of the leaven of the Israelite brothers, which is hypocrisy. They'll look to the sky the sky calendar and say, this is how you find the feast. And they choose the wrong day because they're not following instructions, nor have they read the book. They came from the imagination of their own minds. They have spread leaven amongst the people and the people are following them and will defend their lies. So they look to the sky for the feast but they go to the Gregorian calendar to find Shabbat? Did we not read in Leviticus chapter 23 that the feast of Yahuwah starts with your regular weekly Sabbath? If you look to the sky for your feast days, you have to look to the sky for your Sabbaths Brothers and sisters, why is this so serious? Everything that I just said to you will lead you to the lake of fire if you following these brothers. Verse 2. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Do you hear me? Neither hid that shall not be known. Have we uncovered their wickedness? And this wickedness is great. We're not giving railing accusations that have no merit, that are grounded in foolishness. We're coming from an academic standpoint. We're coming from knowledge. We're coming from truth. We're coming from the scripture, which is totally against them. Yahusha pointed them out and told you what they look like. He told you they wear the best robes. Look at their videos. He told you they like to sit in the best seats. Look at their videos. They are uncovered. They have been revealed. They are no longer hidden. Now, brothers and sisters, it is your responsibility to save your brothers. I have given you the information to do so. I can make this video an hour long pointing out all of the lies and the leaven that they have spread to the people. But I believe that that what I've given you should be enough. If you still hold to the doctrines that they preach after this, then you are just like the people who had no knowledge in the time of Yahusha when he was exposing the scribes and the Pharisees and their hypocrisy. Now, how radical was that? Have you ever heard anything like that before? If you've been reading the scriptures, you have. We have a looking glass into the past. There is nothing new under the sun. 
the same thing that was happening then is happening now. The only difference is that we have a book that shows you what to look for. But yet, because our people are in such a strong delusion, believing lies, they're not paying attention to the book. Pay attention to what Brother David is telling you. Everything that they are telling you wrong leads to death. You have to make sure you have it right. There will be no excuse for you that you were following these brothers. He told you to study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When that day comes and you find yourself in the wilderness, you will be ashamed for following them. They are not right, just like the scribes and the Pharisees. Prove it to yourself and you will see. Now, I had to create a checklist just to make sure everyone gets this thing pretty much correct this year. This could be our last year. The Mashiach was railing against the scribes and the Pharisees. He was getting ready to go to the tree. The Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Passover was rapidly approaching when he gave these messages. Number one. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread starts on March 9th. How does the day work? From evening to evening. So from March 9th in the evening to the 10th in the evening is one day. That is your first day. No servile work can be done. Your feast lasts for seven days and the last day will be the 16th in the evening till the 17th in the evening. That'll be the seventh day. No servile work can be done. Again, on the first day and the seventh day, no servile work can be done. Two, no leaven is to be found in your houses for seven days. You got to clean out the leaven. Baking soda, baking powder, eggs, yeast, any bread products that you have, cake mixes, anything boxed, get rid of it. Don't give it to anyone. You're trying to make them leavened in the time of unleavening, so you don't want to give it to anyone. Three, you are to eat unleavened bread for seven days, from the first day of the feast to the seventh day of the feast. You don't have to eat bread, period, if you don't want to. But if you're going to eat any bread, it has to be unleavened. Four, make your children's lunches. Instruct them on the rules during the week. Make sure they know they can't eat anything that has leaven in it. This is a leaven fast. Have you noticed that when you fast, that people always want to come and give you something to eat? Train them to turn it down. And finally, what you're going to do on the feast, and you can only do this if you are sure you have the right day. If you're sure you're on Yahoo's time, if you have done the research and all is well with your soul, you are to eat, drink, and be merry. Discuss our ancestors and our deliverance that is coming soon. You have to teach the younger generation about this so that they can spread the news to their children. Have a good time, brothers and sisters. You can wash your dishes. You can cook. Just don't do anything that is taxing. 
don't paint your house <laughs> or decide to cut the grass during this high holy day. No. All of your work should be pointed at your feast, your cooking and your preparing and your serving your guest. Now there's some things that we see on the internet. So many different things that people are saying that are leaven. But I want you to keep your eye on the prize. What is the prohibition? Clean out the leaven from your houses. Anything that makes your bread rise. That is baking powder, baking soda, yeast, eggs. Even if you have prepared a sour dough starter, you have to clean out the leaven. Because everything is pointed at the bread. You are to eat unleavened bread for seven days. Why do you clean the leaven out of your house? Can't we abstain from it? Well, so that you're not tempted. Clean it out, brothers and sisters. But here's a rule that you must follow. If you're not at peace with your soul about anything as far as cleaning out products from your home, this is what you do. When in doubt, throw it out. Let the peace of your heart rule your decisions. Peace be unto you, brothers and sisters. Enjoy the feast. Shalom.